Have you ever found yourself fixated on something? Your prayer request is all about that next blessing, all about a bigger breakthrough. As believers, so often we cry out, Fix it, Jesus! But do we cry out with the same passion and intensity? Thank you, Jesus! What you're about to hear is a call for all of us to turn our thanksgiving into thanksgiving, to live a life that is thankful during the good and the bad. Give thanks! By all means, cry out to the Lord, Fix it, Jesus! But don't ever forget to also cry out, Thank you, Jesus! The scripture commands that we praise Him. It commands believers to give praise and thanks to God. Paul said, Men ought to always give thanks. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you. Romans chapter 4, verse 21, lets us know that it is actually evil to be unthankful. Psalm 118 says, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Throughout Scripture, we see that thanksgiving was a way of life, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. The children of Israel were commanded to give thanks. In Leviticus 7, thanksgiving offerings were made to the Lord. After battles, like in 2 Samuel chapter 22, they offered thanksgiving. Solomon dedicated the temple with thanksgiving sacrifices in 1 Kings chapter 8. But even more than that, Jesus gave thanks. As the bread of life, every time he broke bread, he gave thanks. Today we call it saying grace, but for Jesus it was giving thanks. There is something about giving thanks that is supposed to echo in the life of a believer. Yet, we often find ourselves complaining. The sin of the children of Israel wasn't that they were a large group. It was that they were always complaining. The scripture says we ought to always give thanks. The scripture in Romans chapter 1 verse 21 reads, For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. This next segment is about the story in Luke 17 where Jesus heals ten lepers. As you listen, ask yourself, how many of these lepers had a fix-it Jesus request, and how many had a thank-you-Jesus attitude? There were ten lepers in a nameless village on an ordinary day, and Jesus was walking by. They were not on Jesus' agenda. Scripture says Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, passing through Samaria and Galilee. Between these regions lay this village. It was just an ordinary day for these ten lepers except that Jesus was coming by. These lepers were outcasts shunned by society. They had the dreaded disease of leprosy, which had no cure at the time. It would eat away at their flesh, leaving boils, sores, and open wounds. They were weakened, some lame, and cut off from society. Who knows when they last saw their children or family? Everywhere they went, they had to yell out, Unclean! Unclean! Their skin would be white like snow, and they tried to cover it up so others wouldn't see. Here they are, tucked away in a nameless village on an ordinary day. Jesus walks by. As John chapter 1 verse 14 says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The message translation says, The Word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. And here comes Jesus in the neighborhood of their situation. In the How many of us desire for Jesus to walk by us? How many would love the Master to pass by our doorstep or situation? The Lord always makes Himself available, but it's up to us, to our actions, our hunger, our desire to seize the opportunity. These ten lepers probably weren't the only ones with issues in the village, but they were the only ones with the hunger to pursue Jesus of Nazareth. So don't let Jesus pass you by. Don't let the Master walk through your neighborhood and not touch you. As Jesus walks by, leprosy has attacked their larynx and vocal cords, so they couldn't shout. They could only lift their voices. They saw Jesus from a distance, having heard of his miracles. Blind eyes opened, lame feet restored, possessed people set free. This was that Jesus. And they seized the opportunity, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. If you are wise, you'll say the same tonight. Jesus looked at them and said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. He didn't stop. 
spit on the ground, or tell them to lay down or dip in the Jordan seven times. He just spoke, and as they obeyed, their boils disappeared and their flesh was restored. As they walked away, one of them noticed what had happened. To be thankful, you have to be able to see the goodness of the Lord. You need to be able to count your blessings. Think of all the things God has done for you, the car crash he prevented, the peace he gave you, the healing he brought about. You have to see it and give thanks. This man saw what Jesus had done, but he didn't stop there. He thought, I know the master told me to show myself to the priest, but I can't just walk away from what he's done. I have to go back and find him. He returned to Jesus, filled with gratitude, saying, Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how you did it, but thank you. When was the last time you told Jesus thank you? The breath in your lungs right now, that's from him. Jesus wants to know, have you stopped for a moment to say thank you? To live a life that is thankful, you must choose to see what you're thankful for. Verse 15 in Luke 17 convicts us because it shows that not only did the healed leper receive a blessing, but he did something with it. God wants us to do something with the blessings, grace, and mercies he has poured into our lives. This one leper who came back to thank Jesus is an example for us. Jesus healed all ten, but only this one returned. And for him, it wasn't just healing. He was made whole. This story reminds us to be like the one leper who went back and said, Thank you. He was the one who received not only healing, but wholeness. Let the lesson be that you too should return to him and say, Thank you.